Hello and welcome everyone to yet another tech enthusiastic video from Simply Learn. Today we will learn about Java Enterprise Edition. Before we begin, I would like to let you know guys that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. If you wish to stay updated, then please consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you can never miss an update from our end. Now without further ado, let's quickly dive into the agenda for today's discussion. So first we will understand the definition of Java Enterprise Edition, followed by that we will understand why exactly we needed Java Enterprise Edition and then we will get to know the specifications of Java Enterprise Edition, followed by that we will understand the system requirements you need for running Java Enterprise Edition in your local system and followed by that we will have a briefing about how to set up the Java Enterprise Edition into your local system and finally we will wind up the session by learning the basic differences between Java Standard Edition which we normally use and the Java Enterprise Edition which is used by the professional for enterprise purposes. I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now let's quickly begin with our first topic. Now. Let's quickly begin with our first topic, that is, what exactly is Java Enterprise Edition? The Java EE stands for Java Enterprise Edition, which was earlier known as J2EE and is currently known as Jarkataka EE. The Java Enterprise Edition provides a platform for developers with enterprise features such as distributed computing and web services. Now let's move further and understand why exactly we needed Java Enterprise Edition. We needed Java Enterprise Edition for four major reasons. To have powerful API support, to reduce development time, to reduce application complexity and finally to improve the application performance. So followed by the need for Java Enterprise Edition, we will move ahead and understand the Java Enterprise specifications. So in the Java Enterprise specifications, we are going to discuss the four major specifications used by enterprise developers. So the first one being the enterprise specification, followed by that we have a web specification, then we have web server specification, and finally some other miscellaneous specifications. We shall discuss each one of them in detail. Firstly, we will move ahead with enterprise specification. So in enterprise specification, we have the first one to discuss that is the context dependency injection. The context dependency injection provides a container to inject dependencies as in swing. Next we have Java Enterprise Java Bean. The enterprise Java Bean is a set of lightweight APIs that an object container possesses in order to provide transactions, remote procedure calls and concurrency control. Followed by Java Bean we have Java Persistent APIs. So the Java Persistent API are the specifications of object relational mapping between relational database tables and Java classes. Next, we have the Java Transaction API. It consists of Java interfaces and annotations to establish interaction between Java transaction support offered by Java Enterprise Edition. The APIs in the abstract from low level detail to the interfaces are also considered as low level. Followed by Java Transaction API, we have the Java Servlet. The Java Servlet specifications define how you can manage HTTP requests either in a synchronous or asynchronous way. So followed by Java Transaction API, which is one of the enterprise specifications, we will move ahead into the Java Web specifications. So the first one in the Java web specification is the Java servlet. So this specification defines how you can manage the HTTP request either in a synchronous or asynchronous way. It is low level and other specifications completely depend on it. So followed by Java servlet, we have the Java web socket. So the Java web socket is a computer communication protocol and this API provides a set of APIs to facilitate web socket connections. Followed by WebSocket, we have the Java Server Faces. So the Java Server Faces is a service which helps in building graphical user interface out of the components. 
So followed by Java server faces, we have the unified expression language. The unified expression language is a simple language which was designed to facilitate web application developers. So followed by the web specification. Now we will enter the web service specification out of which we have the first one which is the RESTful web service. So the Java RESTful API web service provides services having representational state transfer schema. Next we have the JSON processing. Java API for JSON processing is a set of specifications to manage the information provided in a JSON format. Followed by JSON processing, we have JSON binding. So the Java API for JSON binding is a set of specifications that provide for binding or parsing a JSON file into Java classes. Next, we have the XML binding. So XML binding simply allows for binding of XML into Java objects. For example, SOAP is an XML based protocol to access web services over HTTP. This API allows you to create SOAP web services. So followed by the web service specifications of Java Enterprise Edition, we finally enter into the other miscellaneous specifications of Java Enterprise Edition. So out of that, the first one is the validation. So the validation package consists of various interfaces and annotations for declarative validation support offered by Bean Validation API in Java. Followed by validation, we have the batch applications. So the batch applications provide the means to run long running background tasks which involve large volume of data and which need to be periodically executed. Followed by batch applications, we have Java Enterprise Connector Architecture. So the Java Enterprise Edition Connector is a Java based technological solution for connecting Java service to enterprise information system. So with this, we will enter into our next step where we will learn the system requirements to install Java Enterprise Edition. So the basic requirements to install Java Enterprise Edition into your local system are, you should be having the Java Virtual Machine from the standard 6 edition or more. Followed by that, your local system should be having at least 1 GB of RAM capacity. Next, your system should be having at least 250 GB ROM space available. And finally, you should be having the Java Development Kit installed into your local system. Now next, we will understand how to install Java Enterprise Edition into your local system. So in short, these are the steps you need to follow to install Java Enterprise Edition into your local system. First, you need to browse into the Oracle official Java site. Then go to Java Standard Edition Development Kit. Followed by that, accept the license terms, download the JDK file, run the JDK file as an administrator in your local system, then set up the Java environment. I know this looks a little bit complex, but don't worry. I will drop a link in the description box below, which will explain you in a much detailed way how to install Java into your local system. Please check that to have a better understanding of how to install and set up Java in your local system. So followed by this, we will learn the differences between the Java Standard Edition and Java Enterprise Edition. So the first difference between the Standard Edition and the Enterprise Edition is the Standard Edition provides basic functionalities like defining classes and objects, whereas Java Enterprise Edition mainly focuses on high-end and corporate type of Java applications. The second difference between the both is Java Standard Edition comes with only the standard specifications which will be used by a beginner. And similarly, on the other hand, Java Enterprise Edition comes with some advanced specifications which support web applications and servlets. The third difference between the both is the Java Standard Edition comes with features like class, libraries and deployment environments, whereas the Java Enterprise Edition has structured application with clients, business and enterprise layers. The fourth difference between the both is the Java Standard Edition is used for desktop and mobile application developments. Whereas on the other hand, the Java Enterprise Edition is used mainly for development of web applications. The fifth the difference between the both is the Java Standard Edition is preferred and used by beginners. And on the other hand, the Java Enterprise Edition is preferred and used by experts in Java field. The sixth the difference between the both is the Java Standard Edition does not have authentication. Whereas on the other hand, 
There are strict rules and regulations to be followed when using Java Enterprise Edition related to authentication. So with this we have come to an end of this particular tutorial. If you have any queries related to this particular video or any questions related to Java then please feel free to drop them down in the comment section below and we will have your questions answered as early as possible. Till then thank you until next time. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.